Can I ask you all to stand? All right, and I want you to stretch and I want you to yawn as big as you can because this is the only yawn you get during my presentation. <laughs> oh, doesn't that feel good? Hey. Oh, oh, there you go. Oh, and you can sit down. There we go. So I find myself in the, the most privileged position of being able to maybe just tie the day together and, and just think about some of the things that we've heard. We've heard about change. We've heard about digital disruption. We've heard about climbing mountains. We've turned, talked about how to speak to our clients, how to sell to them, or how not to sell to them. We have heard about burnout. We've heard about leadership. And what is it that brings all of these things together? And as you have been listening and as you've been thinking, what has been going through your mind and what are the conversations that you have been having? And in the work that I have been doing over the last 20 years in leadership, Mark Kahn touched on it this morning where he said, there are so many big leadership rollouts that don't seem to be working. Gallup still says that employee engagement is at a low 33%. And I had to ask myself the question, are we not overcomplicating it? Are we not making engagement, collaboration, far more complicated than it should be? And I came across the whole concept of conversational intelligence. And when I looked at it, I thought it can't possibly be that simple. So I want you to think about, you woke up this morning and your first conversation, hopefully to your, the person that you love, was good morning. Maybe to your colleagues. How many of you actually stopped to listen to the answer? You might have had conversations with your boss, with your, your team, with your customers, with your suppliers. Our day is made up of millions and millions and millions of conversations. We spend the majority of our day in meetings, talking to people. But are we doing it well? So let's take some time to think about the quality of the conversations that we have. And they say we have conversations all day long, and some of them we actually have with other people. Because perhaps the most important conversation is the conversation that we have with ourselves. So I'd like you to reflect on the day. As you were hearing Peter Geldenhuis, who has to be one of the most cleverest people I've ever met, um, when you listen to Ryan, when you listen to Michael, when you listen to Caroline, what was the conversation that was going on inside your head? What were you thinking about? What is the conversation that you're going to have when you go home and say, you know what I heard today? What is the conversation that you have with yourself that is saying, I can do this, I can do something different? Because it's those conversations that we have with ourselves which very often determine the quality of the conversations that we have with others. Now, I could go into the neuroscience of it, and, and there is huge neuroscience that sits underneath this, but what I'd rather do is I'd like to talk about magic. And the reason why I want to do that is because if we pause for long enough and we ask ourselves, what if we had better conversations? What if we could take our conversations and turn them into something special? And rather than giving you science, I gave you magic. And the reason why this was so important to me, because I came across this word here. Can anybody tell me what this word means? Magic. magic. What else? What happens with, when, when, a magician, when a magician takes it? Where's our magician? Here's our magician. When Shay takes his, his, his magician and he does something and he goes abracadabra and it all works. But does anybody know what the word actually means? Okay, very close. Okay. It's, it's, it, anything else? Okay. Now, I heard about this place on the most viable research platform you can ever find. I heard about this on Facebook. <laughs> All right, and as you know, if it's on Facebook, it must be true. Okay, so the academic in me said, okay, let's maybe go and check this out just a little bit before I put it as part of my keynote. And I went and I did some research and I was absolutely blown away by what I felt because yes, it is making manifest. It comes from the ancient Aramaic that means when I speak, I create. How powerful is that? When I speak, I create. Every word that you say in your head or that comes out of your mouth 
makes a difference in terms of what your future becomes. It was Peter who said in his, in his keynote earlier, the best way to predict the future is to create it. But I always ask myself the question, how? And what if it is as simple as the words that we say and the conversations that we have? Because one conversation at a time, we build our future. So what I wanted to do today was do something a little bit different. And I wanted to bring you a gift. Because over the last two or three years, I've been doing some research into what really makes conversations work. And it comes down to perhaps two important things. The first thing is trust. And the second thing is relationships. So on your table, if you would like to grab one of those, it's either, on a, it's either face up or it's face down in, in a pile. I have over the last few months been de developing a model called the Wheel of Trust. And conversational intelligence tells us that if we want to have really great conversations, we focus on two things. We focus on trust and we focus on relationship. So what I want to do is that I want to take you through this wheel and let's have a look at some of the conversations that we have. Now, I actually have a client who keeps this in his bottom drawer and every time he has a meeting, um, he starts the conversation then he pulls open his bottom drawer and he says, okay, that's what I need to do. So I've brought to you today a tool that says when you have a certain response, what kind of conversation should I be having? And to do it in such a practical way. Because remember, we said we had two conversations, those we had with other people and those we have with ourselves. So let's go through this. So the first place of, and for some reason my colors are not showing up on the slides. Okay, so have a look at your wheel. The first place we're at is at the red resistance. Now, what I'd like you to do is turn to the person next to you. I'm um, Shay, if you can do this with me. All right, I want you to do that, palm to palm. Okay, palm to palm. Now, I want you to push, okay? What happens when somebody pushes? What's, what's your response? Okay, it's always to push back, all right? And where are you going with that conversation? Absolutely Nowhere. All right. So if you are in a conversation and that resistance, I'm sure you never have resistant conversations. So you just tell us what you want to do and they just do it. Am I right? Yeah. There you go. All right. All right. So when you, when you find resistance, when you find this and feel it yourself, feel it actually doing this, how do you actually deal with that conversation? Because the internal conversation, and you will find it in the little speech bubble. All right. You will find people who are resistant say, I am right. <laughs> okay, and the hands cross, and the legs cross, and they look at you and say, convince me. You're not going to convince me. Why? Because I am right. And so what we tend to do is that we, we, we want to push back. So what we do is say, listen, I'm telling you. I'm telling you, and the finger goes, and the hands go. This is how it works. And we wonder why we don't get a response. So I want you, as we're going around, I actually want you to make a note of some of the conversations that you have had where you have either experienced resistance or you have seen resistance in yourself. All right. And one of the clear things, gentlemen, all right, if your wife ever says to you, fine, <laughs> All right, that is probably a fairly clear, clear case of resistance. All right, it is not okay. All right, that is not the green light to go ahead. All right, so, so very often what we, we need to do is listen to the verbal cues of what's actually coming across, the verbal and the nonverbal cues of resistance. So what is the strategy that we use to change that? We tune in. Instead of pushing back, listen. And in order to listen, you have to switch off your internal conversation. And you have to open up the space to listen deeply. Ask questions rather than making statements. So say more of that. Ask questions. 
asking questions is the most wonderful way to invite people to discovery. The next part on your wheel, if you'd like to look at your wheel with me, is indifference. That's the hardest one. Because how do you actually move somebody from, ind from indifference? And at this edge of the wheel, we have low trust conversations and people are physically resisting you. The, your brain is resisting you. But when we have conversations that are around indifference, what happens is people are saying you don't care. And caring is at the heart of trust. Connection is at the heart of trust. So think about some conversations. Write some conversations down of where you have experienced, either yourself or with others, where you've just felt this total lack of caring. And the strategy here is to connect. Don't tell them what you know. Don't give them more facts. Don't give them more research. Connect with them. Find out who they are, not what they do. Find out what's important to them, not what you want to sell them. When people know that you care, People buy from people. They buy from people who they know, like, and trust. Then we move on to the next response, which we call the waiting game. And so many companies launch big visions, and they're looking for that magical thing called buy-in. Have you heard that? And they wonder why they're not getting it. It's because very often people have said, I've seen this before. Why aren't you listening to my voice? The executive goes off-site and comes back and imposes their vision on you rather than inviting you to be part of that. And the response to this is one of the most beautiful parts of African philosophy. It's something called Ubuntu. Now, for those of you in the tech sphere, this is not the open source language. All right. <laughs> it is a philosophy that says, I am because we are. And it is at this point of medium trust that we start moving from I to we, and we start saying, let's do this together. If you're at a conversation where you're wanting to move people into the future, this is probably one of the most critical ones, because if you want to move on to the next one, where you want people to be innovative and courageous, they have to feel a sense of belonging. They have to feel a heightened sense of trust, and they're not going to go with you there unless you do. And so we go into this place of courage, and this is where people have room to experiment, to fail quickly, as Brett said earlier. And when we do that, give them a chance to disrupt. So disrupt is a big word that we're looking at the moment. Everybody wants to disrupt. But if you don't have high trust, you're not going to be able to disrupt. Go and see where people are in the wheel of trust, and do you need to bring them up? And it's not necessarily groups of people. It could be individuals. So if you're at a place at the moment where you're trying to disrupt in your industry, how will you take people there? And then we all get to that place that we are really, really looking for, and that is to the place of collaboration. That mythical place that we all want to get to with our customers, with our employees, with our colleagues, with our delegates, and we want to work together. You can only get to collaboration when there is high trust. And the third element of trust, you've got, first of all, who am I? It's about character. It's about connection. It's about relationship. The third part of trust is credibility and delivery. If you want collaboration to work really, really well, you have to be saying, where is the mutual value for both of us? Where can we both achieve more? Where can we create the synergy of making things happen? So those are the five places of trust in the wheel of trust. Where are you in these, on this particular wheel in your various conversations? So what I want to do now, that's enough about me talking. It's now time for you to talk. So I'd like you to sit in your tables in pairs. I want you to choose a conversation that you've been working with just for the next few minutes. And I want you to ask each other, and let's see if we can get some feedback here. What can we say more of and what can we say less of? If we want to shift from resistance, what should we be saying more of? What should we be saying less of? If you're in a place of disruption and courage, what should we be saying more of? What should we be saying less of? So I'd like you to take just a few minutes, 
pair up please and actually write down on that tool and let's see if we can come up with some practical conversational tools that we can take home with us and then go and identify where those conversations are. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, as much as I'd love to give you lots of time, I did try for an extra 10 minutes, but it wasn't possible. <laughs> All right, could I just have your attention back at the front, please? <clears throat> okay, yeah, if I can ask the speakers just to quieten it down a little bit at the back there as well, that would also be good, thank you. <laughs> All right, can you just tell us which conversation you had and what, say, what are you going to say more of and less of? Uh, uh, waiting game. Mm -hmm. And said, ask more questions and make less less All right. So in the waiting game, you're going to ask more more, more questions and make less statements. statements. Great. Thank you. Let's have one more over here. Okay. Um, it's engaging the person. So it's bringing the caring aspect. What or how do you feel? How, what do you feel? So yes. Trying to actually get this mm. for a second. Mm. Hold on. It's actually about the yeah. Another one would be, um, what are you thinking? Mm -hmm. Another one is the problem so big, you can ask them what step one might be in the words. Oh, wow, there. that's brilliant. Bring it down. Mm. Mm. Step mm. step mm. One, maybe we can then build mm -hmm. the solution mm -hmm. together. And the other one is these are all the words of elaboration, collaboration, okay. depending on what the circumstances are. I love it. Thank you very much. <coughs> all right, <coughs> ladies and gentlemen, we've got time for one more short. Yes. Okay, quick one. Yeah, instead of saying you should, you could. Instead of saying you should, you could. All right, so can you now see you've got a black piece of paper and some post-it notes. So for event organizers, I'm going to show you a really, really cool way of getting feedback very quickly. And to look at the power of language. The power of the words that we use are incredibly important. Can you please write one word per post-it note? Um, three, or, three or four words, please, what your main takeaways from today are. All right, just one word. And let's see what the collective language is in the room in order to get some feedback, which we are going to feed back to you. And let's see whether or not we can have, in a very, very short space of time, a collective conversation and some collective language in the room. So you've got about 30 seconds to do that, and then they're going to kick me off the stage. And as I wrap up now, you can carry on doing that as we, we go into the last few minutes of the session to say thank you very much. And this is just an example of the start of a conversation. We do, all of our speakers who are, who are represented here, many of them have master classes that do this either in the conference room or back in your organization. And this is just an example of one of them where we create a chance for people to think and to feed back into the organization. So I trust today has been a really awesome time. Please go out and have those conversations, not only with yourselves, but the conversations that you have with each other, because at the end of the day, every conversation matters.